Good morning and welcome um, to those of you who are on Zoom and to all of you who are here in church. It's good to see all of you. Um, we have a couple announcements for this morning. Our prayer group on Zoom will be meeting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, just for prayer. And if you would like an invitation to that and you're not already getting one, you can talk to Pastor Rebecca and she'll get that to you. We're also going to be having communion during the sermon today instead of afterwards. Um, so if you have your cup with your wafer um, or if you're at home and have bread and juice, you can go ahead and get that ready now. And after, for those of us who are in the um, church building, if you want to just put that in the pew, the little cup holder at the end, um, someone will come and get it afterwards. So um, the other thing is that there is a church business meeting to make a decision about the parsonage on Sunday, August 9th, after the worship service. And our word of preparation for this morning um, is something that St. Clair of Assisi wrote called Place Your Mind Before the Mirror of Eternity. Place your mind before the mirror of eternity. Place your soul in the brilliance of glory. Place your heart in the figure of the divine substance and transform your whole being into the image of the Godhead itself through contemplation so that you too may feel what his friends feel as they taste the hidden sweetness which God himself has reserved from the beginning for those who love him. Call to worship this morning is a prayer for the nation, and we'll um, read it together. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Make us who came from many nations with many different languages, a united people. Defend our liberties and give those who we have trust, entrusted with the authority of the government, the spirit of wisdom, that there might be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our song, uh, which Barb West will be playing, is O Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
this is when we get to share our praises and our prayer requests together. Um, so if you have something um, and you're here in the sanctuary, all you need to do is come up to the microphone so that the people at home on Zoom will also be able to hear you when you give your prayer request. And a couple of you have already given me yours, so I have a couple written down. Is there anyone else who would like to mention a praise or a prayer request who is present um, here in the sanctuary? Okay, if not, um, we can go to um, the people who are worshiping with us through Zoom. Is there anybody um, there who would like to give a praise or a prayer? I would like to ask for a prayer for peace and unity in the country on this 4th of July celebration weekend. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. I have a praise. Hey, Brian. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, and my praise is that today, Daddy and I celebrate 17 years of marriage together. Oh, wow. And I, I, uh, f I just want to share that um, our faith and our little red church has helped us do that. And I thank everybody. And I thank God. Uh, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next song together is going to be How Lovely, Lord, How Lovely with Barb West accompanying us. Um, and so if you're on Zoom, your microphones will be muted and you can sing along. And if you're here with us, you can just go ahead and sing right out. <laughs> Good singing, you may be seated. This morning we'll be looking at another in our series of Psalms, Psalm 27. Um, I've entitled this message, Worship, Pray, Trust. I have a question for you. If I asked you to describe God, what words come to your mind?
Sometimes when I pray, I use an acronym, ACTS. Maybe some of you pray that way. The A stands for adoration, and the C for confession, and then T is thanksgiving, and then the S is supplication, which means that you ask for God's help for ourselves and for others. But this isn't the only way to approach God in prayer. However, I think it's a good way because it begins with adoration or worship. And it allows me to be really mindful of who it is I'm talking with and what a great privilege it is to be heard by God. When I wrote this message, I just wanted to pause like I asked you to and think, what characteristics do I want to worship God for right now? And the things that came to my mind were wisdom and goodness loving kindness, patience, and creativity. I wonder if they matched up with anything on your, your list or if you had other things. There's so many words to describe God. And the Psalms are filled with descriptive words, partially because they're poetry, they're songs of worship. Last week, we meditated on the image of the Lord as our shepherd from Psalm 23. And today, David will give us more descriptions of God that inspire our worship, prayer, and trust in Psalm 27. Psalm 27, this is from the New International Version. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Thank you, Kara. Well, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of the Septuagint, but it's a translation of the Bible from Hebrew into Greek, and it was written about 200 years before Christ came. And it has an inscription at the beginning of Psalm 27 that says, it was written by David before he was anointed the king of Israel. And if you think back to that time period in his life, he spent 17 years being pursued by enemies, including his own father-in-law, King Saul, before he was having the kingship upon him that he had been anointed as a young boy. Psalm 27 seems to reflect what was going on in David's heart and his mind during that long waiting time for the Lord to bring about the fulfillment of the promise from his youth. When we find ourselves waiting or facing adversity, we can join David in his declarations of worship his seeking and praying for security in God, and his confidence as he waits to see God's goodness on full display. 
So let's begin by looking at his descriptions of God so we can join him in worshiping our living God. First, he says, the Lord is my light. Light helps us to see what's around us. It shows us what is true and reveals the path forward in our lives. The Lord both spoke light into existence in the beginning, and he is the source of all light. If we wake up in the middle of the night and we're thirsty, we have to turn on the light or we might stub our toes on the furniture or hit our heads on the door frame trying to find the sink. When we hear a strange noise in the dark, turning on the light helps to reveal the truth so that we don't have to be paralyzed by fear. One of the songs that came to mind as I was meditating on the Lord as light is from South Africa. It's called Siahamba. We are singing for the Lord as our light. It's a Zulu melody, and in the version that I had in my little hymnal at home called Worship and Rejoice, all the verses that are over to the side be between the choruses, they come from Psalm 27. So it sounds like a little bit like this. The Lord is the strength of our lives. Of whom shall we be afraid? Though foes may be near to destroy, the Lord will be our light. We are singing for the Lord is our light. We are singing for the Lord is our light. Do you know that song? Yeah. This song was originally used both for worshiping God and also as a marching song as the people of South Africa protested apartheid. Those who sang it looked to God for the truth about who they were and the truth about God's desire for them to be free and equal and the truth about how it is love and respect for all of our human brothers and sisters that most reflects God's heart. This year in our country, God's light is shining like I've never experienced it on this particular issue, illuminating a darkness in our history our systems, and our hearts that needs to be admitted and repented from and healed. It's not always comfortable to welcome the light, but if we do, we will find the way forward beyond fear to love. David also says, the Lord is my salvation. And this carries the idea of protecting our life from anything that is dangerous or destructive. In 2020, we have watched a common enemy sweep across the whole world, and it takes people's lives as they succumb to COVID-19. I think all of us are grateful for the people who work at medical clinics and hospitals who are willing to put themselves in harm's way to help save the lives of those who get infected with the coronavirus. Every area of our life and our country has been affected by this battle. We can just look around the sanctuary and see that, or know that you're on Zoom, and that's kind of strange. We never did that before. We ask for the great physician, our God, to show us mercy and healing and protection. And God has already given us salvation from an even more deadly virus, the sin that not only damages our physical lives, and the lives of everyone around us, but it can actually damage our most vital thing, our relationship with God. John 3, 16 to 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus took the virus of sin into himself on the cross, and he overcame both sin and its ultimate consequence, death. So let's pause right now in this moment and thank Jesus for his sacrifice as we take the bread and give him thanks, remembering that he is, his body was broken for us.
and we take the juice, remembering that his precious blood was shed for our freedom and our eternal life. We do this small act of commemoration, of communion, because Jesus asked us to. And as we lift up our hearts with worship and gratitude, we remember the gracious way he opened for us to be saved, to have life with him here that is full and abundant, and to have eternal life in heaven with God forever. The third image that David uses is of God as a stronghold. It's not a word we use in everyday language, but it's not too hard to figure out that stronghold is a place of safety and protection. Have you ever visited a military fort with the big stone walls and has little tiny skinny windows so that the people inside could maybe fire out some weaponry but not have anything come back at them? David is not looking for a stronghold made of stone to keep him safe, but to actually be in the presence of God. His only weapon that he wants to wield is worship, and he wants to secure the battlefield of his heart. Listen to Psalm 27 verses 4 to 5 again. He says, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. The imagery kind of changes from temple to a sacred tent to a rock, and it's very fluid because When David wrote this, the temple in Jerusalem was not even built yet. The people worshiped God in a tabernacle, a movable tent, that they constructed as God led them through the wilderness on the way to the promised land. And when they were not close to the tabernacle, they worshiped God in their homes or outside under the sky. You see, it wasn't the strength of the structure that offered safety. It was just the awareness of God's presence. This is the first Sunday for many of us back in our sanctuary. And maybe you can identify with David's longing to be worshiping in a familiar place. But the security and closeness to God, they don't come from the sanctuary itself. It comes from our awareness of God, from our openness to the Holy Spirit, and from our love and our gratitude for Jesus, for all he's done for us. So whether you're here in the sanctuary or your home or outside right now, if you are attuned to God's presence in your life, you are in a sanctuary. And the natural expression of a heart, aware of God's presence, are the ones that David had in the psalm, a willingness to give sacrificially and joyfully in response to all that God's given us, singing and making music to the Lord. And we're so glad for the chance to do this together and for the musicians who pour out their gifts with joy. Singing and music lift our spirits and with the eyes of our heart opened, we realize that we are singing in the very throne room of God in heaven. And now, with that awareness of who God is, with our hearts lifted up, David and we are ready to bring our requests to our great God. David begins his prayer by asking God to help him lay aside his fears. And he doesn't deal with the fear of his enemy first he deals with an even greater fear that he would lose the closeness he relies on with his relationship with God. I'm going to read verses 7 through 9 from the Passion Translation. It says, God, hear my cry. Show me your grace. Show me mercy and send the help I need. Lord, when you said to me, seek my face, my inner being responded, I'm seeking your face with all my heart. 
So don't hide yourself, Lord, when I come to find you. You're the God of my salvation. How can you reject your servant in anger? You've been my only hope, so don't forsake me now when I need you. David is aware that God is the source of his life, and he wants his most important relationship in his life to be strong, to be vibrant, connected, and full of trust. What about us? When we pray to God, do we put our relationship with him first in our prayer requests? Or do we see prayer as a means to secure the other things that we value in life? It's an important question to sit with, isn't it? An invitation might be coming your way this morning to reorder our priorities. And the invitation is a gift from the Holy Spirit. David's prayer for closeness and security, being heard and seen and having God respond with grace and mercy and help, it reveals something in David's heart, a wound that needs to be healed. He feels like he's been abandoned by his parents, possibly through some kind of a rejection experience that we don't really know about, but maybe they didn't mean to abandon him. Maybe they died and he misses them, and he feels like an orphan. God is the only father he has right now, and David affirms his trust that God will receive him. We might have trust issues too from being abandoned in some way by people that we've loved or relied on. Raising our issues, our woundedness up to God for healing and prayer instead of the alternative, which is usually just closing in and only trusting ourselves. If we, if we offer that wound up to God in prayer, it's a way through to, he, to have a healthy, healed relationship. We need to believe that God will never leave us. He is our parent and our companion, and he will be with us our whole life long. We might not have our parents or our spouse, or the best friend we talk to when something hard comes up in our life with us to ask about that situation. But we do have God, and we can pray like David did for God to teach me your way and lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. We probably don't have people chasing us and trying to kill us like David did. Our oppressors might look a little more like a disease in our body, or someone at work who harasses us or gossips about us, or people who want to use us to take things from us for their benefit and our harm. These are very hard situations and there are many more like them. And we need God's help to know how to handle them, what to say, how to be healthy and free. And prayer is the place where we come to God willing to lay down our agendas and our solutions and trust his. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 promises, If we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, if in all our ways we submit to him, he will make our paths straight. Isn't that exactly what David asked for, for straight paths? And the word that is translated straight in this case, mishor, actually means level. It means just and righteous. He wants God to help him do the right thing. Walking in step with God is the object of David's prayer. It's what I want to do most each day. Is that what you want most? Often knowing what the next right step will be requires a willingness to wait instead of rushing ahead. So the third thing I see is how David expresses his trust. In verse 13, he says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I notice that he's expressing this confidence to others, like worshiping God out loud like we have been doing this morning, giving testimony of our confidence to God, whether we write it out or we speak it in a conversation with people, it actually increases our faith. It orients us to look with hope for God instead of being overwhelmed by fear. Now, I get the awesome privilege of 
being able to speak trust in God to you as I give the message each week. It's built into my job. But what about you? Where are the places that God is inviting you to speak your trust in him? One thing to keep in mind as you ponder that question is when we encourage others, the words encourage and uplift us at the very same time. The last verse of Psalm 27 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. It seems like David might be talking to himself, to his own soul, as well as the others who are listening. And waiting can take different forms. It looks different, and we need the Spirit to guide us into which kind of waiting God is asking us for. My devotional writing friend, Diane Hollowell, wrote about it this last week. She said, sometimes God wants me to be very still and very quiet and spend time with him to let him speak into my heart. If I give him that time and wait on his word, he always has something very special to teach me. Secondly, he might call to an act of waiting to open a door, to try the handle and see if that's the door God is wanting us to walk through or if he's gonna close them. And the third way of waiting she wrote about is to be aware of the results of my planned actions to kind of sit with the decision you think that God has given you for the next right step. And to to ask yourself, do I feel his peace or do I feel agitated? That sense that something's not quite right here and I dare not go forward with it because I don't have peace and clarity about what I am about to do. But to wait for the sense of peace before you make the commitment. Whichever kind of waiting we are being invited to, whether it's being still or active and trying the door or speculative and thinking ahead, we get the chance to be taught and led by the Holy Spirit to see the next right step on our straight path. And on that life path, we will experience God's goodness. Psalm 27 is a testimony of David that helps us to see how awesome and mighty and trustworthy our Lord is. We need that reminder of who it is we're addressing when we pray and how much of a privilege it is for that connection and grace and help. And when we worship and pray, not only in our church service, but every day of the week, we can be reminded that God is trustworthy. And if we wait on our everlasting God, he will show us the next step in the challenging situations that we're facing. And God will also be delighted to show us his goodness. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we walk through sometimes a valley aware of the oppression that surrounds us. But Lord, help us to be even more aware of your presence with us. May we have hearts of worship and trust. May we lift up our wounds to you to heal so that we can trust you more. And Lord, we look forward with hope and confidence that we will see the goodness that you long to pour out on us in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, please stand with us if you're able as we uh, meditate on, on, on God, his eternal nature, and, and uh, the joy that comes with uh, waiting on him. Upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord.
add a couple more thank yous. Um, thank you to John and to Cheryl um, who did these beautiful barriers and made them custom for our needs here. Thank you very much for that and to for Carol and Lois who both brought flowers today for our sanctuary. I think um, Lois's are in memory of her husband Phil. But um, before we go please Receive your benediction. It's just, it's from Psalm 27. Just let the words flow over you one more time. May the Lord, who is our light, our salvation, and our stronghold forever, show us his beauty as we seek him. May the Lord hear our prayers and answer with abundant grace and mercy. And may we wait with confidence to see God's goodness in our lives and in our land. Amen.